How's it going guys? Austin Covey here and uh, as you can see by the backdrop it is right around Christmas time here. Uh, it's actually a couple days after Christmas so I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. Uh, we just haven't gotten the tree down yet so I thought I'd use it as a backdrop. Um, a friend of mine messaged me a week or two ago and asked me and I thought this was an interesting question. He said um, will 5000 series be worth it or is 5000 series worth it? Referring to the uh, NVIDIA RTX 5000 series that is uh, as far as everybody assumes uh, going to be announced here uh, maybe in the next week or so, right? January 6th, I think, is when NVIDIA's keynote is at CES. Anyway, uh, I think the general anticipation is that they're going to announce their new graphics cards there. And um, so he, he was asking, do I think it's worth it? And I was like, well, <laughs> it's kind of a compl complicated question, right? So I, I kind of thought for a second, I said, the only thing I can say is it depends. Um, you know, and, and that's true, right? It depends. Are you what is your scenario? And his situation was he currently does not have a gaming computer. He liked gaming, he has a family now, he kind of had to liquidate the gaming stuff when the family came along and now he's gotten to a place where maybe he can kind of start picking that back up again. So the question, you know, for him, that might be a little bit of a different answer than for other people. You know, if you already have a setup, it's more of a, does my current setup do what I want it to do in the time I want it to do it? Um, or something around those lines, right? Like, does it does it accomplish what you need it to accomplish or what you want it to accomplish? Whereas I guess if you have nothing, it's it becomes more of a, a value proposition. Is the new stuff a better deal than the old stuff? And that becomes a little bit, I mean, it's if you're if you're simply in that sort of NVIDIA pipeline, right? It's like, okay, is the is the 5000 series better per dollar than the 4000 series? Um, my response to him was, well, if you're just starting from scratch, you know, Intel just launched some stuff. Uh, seems to be doing well. I think there's a general assumption that they might have some higher end stuff coming. I know they're staying in that like mid to low end range, um, but that they might have some, some better stuff coming. Uh, there's a general uh, assumption that AMD is going to launch some new graphics cards right around the same time as Nvidia because that's just kind of how they roll. Uh, you know, it's kind of how competition works. So my response to him was, I mean, I might would wait for a little while and kind of see, wait till all the cards are on the table and, and see what the options are. It seems like this time around, uh, you know, at the end of the 30 series, there was uh, a lot of really good sales to be had. I picked up a 3090 at that time, a 3090 Ti for like less than 50% of, of MSRP um, because they had maintained too high of a stock of them and then 40 series comes out. So there's, or right before 40 series comes out, there's this like massive sell down of 30 series stuff. Uh, but this time it seems like uh, NVIDIA has kind of feathered their product launch a little bit, and so they've ramped down production of some of the 40 series stuff, so I don't think we're going to maybe see that massive sell-off. Uh, I could be wrong. That'd be great if I was, but I, I don't think I am on this time. So I don't know that you're going to get old gen for like a super great deal. Um, that being said, if old gen is going to continue to be the same price, I might wait for new gen because, uh, you know, it makes a lot more sense if you're going to get a really good deal on it. If you're not, you might as well wait and see what the new stuff is. Um, so I think, you know, my thought to him was wait and wait till all the cards are on the table unless you really have a, a pressing reason to get one right this second. Um, you know, wait until all the cards are on the table and then kind of pick and choose which one's your best option. And some of that comes down, and this is for, for anybody, right? How interested are you in the feature set that comes with the graphics card and you know the DLSS or the uh, you know FSR you know all the different feature sets whether it be AMD or Nvidia there but uh, all of the different feature sets as far as you know frame gen or um, upscaling or whatever um, or do you just play rasterized games and that's what you do or, or are you more like me where you actually use it for more of a workstation application um, and then if it's a if it's a business thing, it's like okay, is my current setup slowing me down enough that I need to upgrade to, to keep up with my production workflow, or is it uh, maybe my VRAM limitation is currently harming my production workflow, and so maybe the speed's not the problem, maybe my VRAM's the problem, and that was uh, a situation I had. This was several generations ago. When we were looking at like the 2000 series, and then the Radeon 7 came out, and then they kind of put a stop to the Radeon 7 relatively quickly, and they went on sale and you could get them for like $500 or something, which is a lot of money. But at that time for a card with 16 gigs of VRAM was not that much money um, because the 2080 Ti's didn't have that much and they were twice that expensive. So, you know, I, I made the decision to sacrifice some performance 
uh, in as far as the compute power to get more VRAM uh, because most of my workflow is in either DaVinci Resolve or Blender and uh, like a, a slightly slower graphics card is still faster than a CPU render, right? So if you have a, a fast graphics card without very much VRAM and you're, you're hammering the, the RAM a lot, you're, you're running out of RAM a lot and you're having to switch over maybe to either it's using shared system memory or your CPU rendering, those are both are a lot slower than a slower graphics card with more VRAM. At least that was my experience at the time. Blender might have improved how they handle that uh, since then. But so all of those things kind of play a role ultimately in is it worth it or is it not worth it? It's like, well, can I play the games I want to play? If, if you're a gamer, can I play the games I want to play at the resolutions I want to play with all the bells and whistles turned on that I'm interested in? Uh, so, you know, can I use the ray tracing? Can I do the this and that and the other? And if the answer is no, then it might be worth it to you. You'll just have to wait and see what performance is. Um, but if everything that you're doing now works fine and you're happy with it, eh, don't spend the money, right? And then again, on a production side, can, can you edit the videos you need to edit at the resolution? You need to edit them with all of the effects and things that you need to edit them with and get them out in a timely manner. Um, and it could be when you look at performance, it's like, well, I'm not getting them out in a timely manner or I'm not able to crunch videos as quickly as I want to but the new ones don't improve it enough, <laughs> right? So it's like, oh, the money doesn't make sense because it's not going to be faster enough to fix my problem. And at that point, you may have to start looking into a second computer, right? Like a, a computer that you use just for rendering or exporting so that you can maybe save something to a NAS and then offload it to um, a different computer to handle the export so you can go on to editing videos on your primary one. So there are other ways that you can work around that too, but I don't know very many people who are in a situation where uh, you know, a 4080, 4090 or something like that is not fast enough to keep up with their workflow. But if it is for you, then, you know, secondary computer might be an option. But anyway, that's just kind of, I don't know, it's a, he had asked me that and a couple other people had kind of floated a similar question to me and I thought, well, maybe I'll just make a video about it if there are that many people wondering. So ultimately, does your current card do what you want it to do? And then, I mean, I wouldn't, unless you're just really hurting, right? Unless you still, I mean, one of my computers is still running a GTX 1080. I wouldn't play games on it, but it does other things that I needed to do just fine. But you know, if you're still playing on, on something like that and you're like, man, I really need an upgrade. Uh, if you're still on a 1080, you probably need a processor upgrade too, no offense. But uh, you know, if you're in a situation like that where you're like, man, I'm really hurting or my system broke or it got you know water damage or something and I really need a new system, you may be really committed. Um, but if you're not, I, I would be very much in a wait and see uh, kind of mindset to see what uh, what all three players have when, when everything's on the table and what makes the best sense or what's the best deal for you. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. You might think I'm an idiot. You might think it's a great idea. I have no idea. But uh, always, always open to hearing other people's feedback and seeing what I can learn. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you later.